The objective of this video is to explain the need for addressing on a network. So far, we have only solved internet problems when you are connected to one other person, so-called point-to-point communication. Obviously, the internet is bigger than that, and today we're going to look at problems that involve multiple people. So some vocabulary to touch on to begin. A uh, IP address is a number that's assigned to any item that is connected to the internet. So that could be your phone, a laptop, um, IoT devices such as a toaster or thermostat will now have an IP address. Packets are small chunks of information that have been carefully formed from larger chunks of information. Um, remember TCP, the Transmission Control Protocol? I like to think of the P in TCP as packets, not actual protocol, because almost all the other P's in these acronyms we're looking at will stand for protocol. And that's the last one. A protocol is a set of rules governing the exchange or transmission of data between devices. So think back to our ASCII lesson. What's the difference between a protocol and an encoding? Great video from code.org explaining IP addresses and DNS. You see uh, Mr. Surf right there. Uh, some video notes if you don't have time to watch this. Uh, the internet is a network of networks. It is a uh, the internet is a design philosophy slash architecture inside of a protocol. IP addresses are 32 bits long. At least they used to be. Uh, IPv4 um, is what we're moving away from, uh, moving towards IPv6, which is 128 bits. Uh, think about the need for an increased a uh, number of bits in IP addresses with all these IoT devices by moving to IPv6 will have enough addresses uh, for everyone. Uh, a good way to think about this is every grain of sand on earth can have their own IP address. So I do not think the battleship exercise was rigor in rigorous enough for our brief time together. Uh, for other schools and our environments, I'm sure it's great. But um, for you guys, if you just watched this video, and if you really insist on doing this, go ahead. Uh, my reasoning was this would take about 20 to 30 minutes out of our day, uh, while the explanation for addressing, I think, is simple enough, and only takes a max of two minutes for me to explain it to you. This lesson builds up uh, students learning about the IP uh, addressing system, commonly known as IP addresses. Up to this point in the course, the Internet Simulator has only assumed point-to-point -point communication. The protocols students were inventing mostly had to do with encoding information in binary, rather than also encoding communication information required for successful delivery of the message. Think, write, share, what is the difference between point-to-point -point and IP addressing? Many computers are connected together by networks, so if a computer sends some bits out, those bits pass through many computers. How does a computer know those bits? who those bits are for? If a response is necessary, how does it send it back? This is a complicated question, but the first part of the answer is that you need an addressing system and some kind of fixed structure for messages that everyone agrees on i.e. a protocol. So messages can be interpreted properly. We'll get to routing later. Think right share. What is the first part to solving the question? How does a computer know which bits are for it? Since everyone receives any bits that were sent by anyone else, a method for identifying the intended sender and receiver of the message is needed. Many network systems, such as local Ethernet and Wi-Fi, rely on addressing schemes to make sure bits are received by the correct computer based on address and for other computers to simply ignore messages not intended for them. So here's a security piece to our addressing schemes. If you're a big note taker or a fan of lists, here's a list for you on facts about IP addresses. Uh, the IP is the only network layer protocol with its own addressing system. Remember there are different layers to our protocols. HTTP would be an application layer. IP is a network layer. IP addresses are currently 32 bits long, moving to IPv6, don't forget that. IP addresses have two parts, a network identifier and a host identifier. So right here, do you know the difference between a network identifier and a host? IP addresses are signed to network interface adapters, not to computers. 
The source IP address field in the IP header always identifies the computer that generated the packet. The destination IP address field in the IP header always identifies the packet's final destination. Alright, and we're at the DOL now, so explain the need for addressing with two specific details to support. Today's addressing lesson was pretty short because now that you're on Slack, I want us to have the opportunity to use it quite a bit. So why not go to an RFC, now that you know what an RFC is as well, and let's read through this about addressing and just discuss on Slack. If you don't uh, want to type in this URL right here, if you just Google RFC 1918, you should be able to find it. And so what we'll be talking about is vocabulary, so we could tear apart some of the vocab in the article. Um, in the RFC and this will give you an opportunity to have some opinions as you're reading and uh, another opportunity to express some some great hopes and some fears uh, especially as you get to the airport example in in this it's um it's pretty scary <laughs> i'll leave it at that